Hey everyone, what's going on? Jeff here from Films at Home and today I'm really excited for this video because it's one that I've been wanting to make for a long time and the topic today is really going to be about film restoration and more specifically how does a movie go from 35 millimeter or 16 millimeter or whatever film is available onto a Blu-ray or even better a 4K release with HDR and new audio like Dolby Atmos or 7.1 DTS. How does that actually happen? What's the process? How does the video get restored? How do they work on the audio? What are some things that you could know about this? And also covering like what are some of the actual costs of this process, which may help answer some of your questions as to why movies aren't coming to Blu-ray or 4K when you hear how much some of this restoration work can actually cost and how much time it takes. So we're gonna cover that all in this video today. I'm gonna try to you know, give it to you from you know layman's terms. I myself, obviously I'm not a film restoration expert, but I've done a lot of research for this video, which is why it took so long to come out. I've talked to people in the industry to get their insights and I'm also going to splice in clips here from a couple of Universal Pictures uh, restoration short documentaries that came with some of their Blu-rays but they're a really really good look at how some of this stuff actually happens and giving you a visual so I'll splice that in as well now before I get started with this video I do want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor so stay tuned for that and I'll be right back after the break Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for just about anything you'd ever want to learn. Each class is full of projects and resources, and now's as good a time as ever to learn a new skill, market yourself for a new job, or maybe just get a little creative. But Skillshare literally has a class for everything in tons of great communities where you can connect with other members like yourself. Now, the class that I took was actually a cinematography and filmmaking style class by cinematographer and director Zach Mulligan. His class was really cool. It talked a lot about how to set up um, shot sequences and shot lists and kind of how different shots look with temperature and uh, framing. And just as somebody who's interested in movies and the way they're shot, it was very interesting. So if you're interested in Skillshare, uh, the first thousand people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare premium membership. And after that, it's only about $10 a month. All right, everyone, so thank you, huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. They've really helped with the amount of uh, time and research that I put into this and actually have a few classes on Skillshare that I actually learned something about restoration and film that helped me with this video. So a really cool platform, definitely recommend checking out them and use that link in my description to get that premium free trial. Now, as we talk about video and film restoration, the biggest thing to start is the source. So what source elements do you actually have? And that is really gonna determine a lot of what happens next in the process. So studios like Universal and Warner Brothers and Paramount, they have a lot of uh, archives and libraries of film reels sitting around, you know, completely archived and preserved. But that doesn't always mean that the original negative is going to be available or that the original negative is always going to be in the best shape. The original negative is the actual original film that the cinematographers and directors actually shot when they made the movie. So sometimes they're in great shape, sometimes they're not, depends on how old they are. But either way, most of them have you know scratches, blemishes, something up with them where there's gonna need some restoration work to make this a very clean you know, 4K or Blu-ray image. Now the best option is always to have the original negative, but you will sometimes see in descriptions of restorations that they have um, an early film print because the negative was lost or destroyed. There's always some reasons, but if you can get the original negative, that's always your best bet that's gonna give you the best quality. And once they have that, the studios you know, and the restoration artists, they start to look at how is that negative? What shape is it in? Are there scratches, blemishes? Do we need to run this through some sort of scan to clean it up? And one interesting thing I learned from the Jaws behind the scenes restoration documentary was they use something called a wet gate scan. And what this actually does is it runs the film through this sort of liquid that can actually remove scratches very easily. It was almost too good to believe. And when I was watching it, I couldn't believe how easily they just run the film frame by frame through this liquid solution and it can actually remove scratches and not let those things appear in certain lights 
So it's a very quick way to clean up, say, you know, 50% of the image and get rid of a lot of obvious scratches. Now, outside of scratches and things on the physical film, there's also gonna be other issues. There could be issues with the film cell itself. There could be some dirt. There could be some serious, you know, cuts or breaks on that film cell that needs special repairs. And that's where the restoration artists really come into play. Now there's a great clip here from the Jaws documentary that I'm gonna show you where you can actually see how the artists go in and go frame by frame to remove elements. It's really interesting, I'll let them talk for themselves, but here's a little bit on that process. Once we had the digital scans, we went ahead and dealt with issues such as film movement and dirt we have very high-end graphics and editing systems. These tools enable us to take the digital data that results from the film scan and manipulate those pixels in many different ways. With JAWS, each damage was different. You just would have to look at it and see if you could take a, a frame after the damage or a frame before. Part of a good frame here, good frame there, composited together and digitally paint it out. You could spend three to four hours on one frame. Chief Brody! So as you can see there, it is painstakingly difficult to go through each film cell and do that. So it's, uh, that's why I really respect what these people do. And when there's a great 4K release, you can see the work that goes into it. Now, outside of just, you know, the actual film quality and how the resolution is going to look here on film, you also have to worry about color. There's huge variance in color between different film cells and even on the same film reel itself, just because of the lighting that was used, there can be huge variances. Now, again, I'm going to point back to the Jaws documentary here to give you a good look at this, but you can see how you can really maintain the initial integrity and the contrast in brightness can be adjusted, but not lose the integrity of the film. When you're working with an original negative across some of the cuts, you see tremendous differences in color, brightness, contrast. Our colorists do a great job at matching all those shots. So as you saw there in Jaws, this was all supervised by Steven Spielberg and the colorists at Universal really did a great job matching up different film cells and really providing us a excellent image. Now, another interesting clip here that I want to show you is actually from Dracula, another Universal's Pictures restoration project. So huge props to them because honestly, they had more behind the scenes stuff and more research that I could get my hands on than probably anybody else. And they're very open about it. Um, but if you look at this clip from Dracula, this is where it gets interesting because that's a black and white movie. So you're mostly playing with contrast and brightness levels. And you can see here the amount of adjustments that they can actually make even to a black and white image to really improve the contrast so that it's not so washed out, which can often be a problem with black and white movies, so I'll let them speak for themselves. Even though it's black and white, it still requires some form of uh, density and contrast correction. We call it color for lack of a better word. When this thing first started, we had something that looked very washed up. So what you're trying to do is maintain the contrast to make it look mysterious and spooky, but still see the detail. We can isolate an area of the frame and either make it darker or lighter if we can fix it and not compromise the overall image, we usually try to fix it. So that's sort of a little behind the scenes view on how these video restorations actually happen. How do you go from a 35 millimeter film reel onto a digital backup and then into a 4K digital copy. Now there's other mastering and, and disc mastering and authoring that needs to happen to go from digital backup to 4K Blu-ray. I could talk about that in a different video, but I just wanna focus on the restoration here and what goes on behind the scenes there. Now in terms of cost, just for the visuals here, you can assume that it's gonna cost anywhere from $100,000 to upwards of $500,000 to do a full film restoration like this. So if you think about the cost of a 4K Blu-ray being $25, you know, do the math there on how many they need to sell just to break even. And that probably will start to give you an idea of maybe why some of these lesser known movies, even if they're cult favorites or movies that you really love, may not make it to 4K because you really need a movie of the stature of say Jaws or Spartacus or 2001 A Space Odyssey to get that much back in sales. Now they preserve them not just for 4K sales and for physical media, they preserve them to have a better copy of the film, 
but you do have to imagine that there are definitely budget talks going in. And when you're talking about $500,000 just for the visuals, you better be sure that that movie's actually gonna sell when you put it out to the public. So that was the video. And now on the audio, this is where it also gets really interesting and I learned a lot. So audio is also on these reels and they often have multiple reels for the soundtrack, for uh, sound effects, for dialogue. There's often a lot of different reels to work with. And I don't know a ton about audio. So again, I'm gonna revert back here to a couple clips from Universal that'll give you a much better explanation of this. And you can see here all the work that they did on this. The audio side on JAWS, our project was to build a 7.1 up mix. It's an iconic film. We're very sensitive to the integrity of the original mix. At that time, it was an analog process. They recorded out 35 millimeter mag. We're taking all that sound information and adding additional channels to it. That process consists of taking the original dialogue, music, and effects mono tracks and realizing that we're now going to place it in a 7.1 audio codec. To do that, you're going to have to go and get backgrounds and sound effects that can get you to move left to right on the screen. Now, obviously, you always want to keep the original integrity, and I think they did that really well in Jaws, but this clip coming up here from Dracula kind of shows you how you can maintain original integrity, but also significantly clean it up. If you listen to the before and after in this clip, you'll hear just how poor that audio was from the original Dracula movie. There's just this constant hiss and background noise that honestly makes it a little bit hard to hear dialogue and hear some of the effects of the movie. So here's the clip from Dracula to give you an idea of the audio restoration on something that's a lot older and on a mono track. We have some incredible artists who are able to go in and sonically deal with some of the issues that are inherent in the source material. As I'm going through, I can zoom in on various areas of the soundtrack and isolate pops, ticks, bumps, and individually clean up. There's a lot of noise that, that exists in the original soundtrack. When we listen to the raw track, there's just a, a horrible hiss throughout that entire picture. Now we really get to hear the movie in a clarity it's never been heard before. Listen to them, children of the night. So you can see super interesting stuff. A lot of work goes into these things and you can see how much time and effort it takes. Now, I've been told by industry sources that a Dolby Atmos mix actually costs about another $100,000 to do properly, to take all these original elements and mix them across all those channels. And then to mix them for Atmos is even another step. So again, when you're looking at 4K discs and maybe you're upset that they didn't come with Atmos, you have to think about, you know, maybe they're not cutting corners, but maybe they can do a 7.1 track for $25,000 and a Dolby Atmos track is gonna cost them another $100,000. And it's just budgets in the reality of physical media sales. And these studios are businesses at the end of the day, they need to make their money. And it's a significant investment to go to Atmos. $100,000 is no joke. And to even get Atmos in any of these 4K discs makes me appreciate it a lot more with the amount of time and money that goes into these restorations. So hopefully this video gave you a little bit of a background, a little look into this world of film restoration and 4K Blu-ray and how things you know, actually make their way from that film reel to a beautiful 4K disc like Jaws or even a great Blu-ray disc like Dracula or many of the other studios. I used Universal as an example because they had a lot of content online about this, but Warner Brothers and Paramount and even Disney, Fox, Lionsgate, all these studios are working together and doing this work. And it also should make you really appreciate the work that maybe an Arrow video, a Shout Factory, Kino Lorber, Vinegar Syndrome, Blue Underground, some of these independent studios that are doing all of this, you know, on their own, on much smaller budgets with much smaller teams. You can see how much work has to go into these titles. And so that's why I always give huge props to those independent distributors because they take a lot of money and a lot of time and effort to make these 4K releases, and they usually don't have the resources that a Universal has. So that's it for this video. I'm really happy I'm getting this out there and, and uh, you know getting this topic talked about. I've kind of covered this before in like videos about why older movies look better on 4K than newer movies, and why there's a bigger leap from Blu-ray to 4K on older movies. So this kind of touches on those topics as well. But hopefully this makes you guys appreciate you know the 4K releases we do have and gives you some understanding 
as to you know why some of your favorite movies uh, may not make it to 4k just the sheer amount of work that goes into it if you want them done right it's a very big undertaking so that is it for the video thank you to our sponsor skillshare who helped support me in making this video and the amount of time and effort that went into this really appreciate their partnership make sure you look at the link down in the description right at the very top of the description like i said only the first thousand people who click that link will get the free premium membership and then after that it's only about ten dollars a month you can cancel at any time but if you're interested in it ten dollars a month is not so bad especially right now with pandemics and people working from home you can learn something new on skillshare and maybe expand your your creativity if you're bored maybe learn a new skill that can get you a new job or just learn about that photography or, or film editing you've always wanted to learn about it's a really really interesting and great platform and if you're a youtuber there's tons of great resources on there for you as well so i definitely recommend it click that link in the description to get your free premium trial and get started today but otherwise thank you for watching make sure you check out all the other links to ways you can support me and my channel and get in touch through social media on TikTok talk and instagram and all the other ways you can support my channel i'll also leave links to those documentaries on jaws and dracula so you can watch the full video they're a few minutes long that i just took clips out of them but it's worth a full watch if you have time they're also actually on the discs if you have those as well um, but otherwise yeah just thank you for watching thank you for your support of my channel i really appreciate it as always i know this video was a little bit longer and longer form but i think it's important and interesting to a lot of people so I'm happy to do it. I'm really glad it's finally out there and you guys are seeing it. Um, and I'm really excited to share it with you all. So hope you have a great rest of your day. Stay safe and stay healthy out there. And I will talk to you guys soon.